Hello everyone and welcome to the Melbourne Traditionalist episode 64. Um, so first of all, I'm going to talk about my subscribers. Um, I had 10 and now I have 9 and one of my subscribers has uh, has deleted his uh, support, Hamish. Uh, thank you for your support, Hamish. Um, and then in the uh, when you unsubscribe, it, it actually asks, you know, have you got a reason? And all he put was no. Now, it happened last Monday on the 3rd of November. And um, I actually put up a post about uh, President Trump and his re-election chances and whether I'd support him and why and so forth. And that was the day. So I don't know whether it was no, he just disagreed with me, or why isn't there a written article, or I don't know, I'm not sure. So Hamish, if you want to send me an email, and my email is on my site, Upon Hope, um, please do so, I'd really like to know. Um, I also got some some comments from last week's uh, comments episode. And so I'll deal with the uh, the outlier first. Uh, Lord Slap, Queensland election results were indeed depressing. Are Australians too far gone? You know, I have um, mixed feelings on this. My uh, my dark side says yes, says uh, that we are too far gone. We've got too many immigrants and too many people have gone through too much education and um yeah we're 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 a long way down a lot further down than we'd like to be or even to think that we are but then on the light side i think to myself well you can't vote in favor of nothing and uh, when the opposition is already disorganized before they go into government maybe that's the result we probably should expect that the government, no matter how bad, is still going to get in because they're the devil we know. And um, I think that that's a, another way of looking at it. And um, I, I'm a bit... Yeah, it is depressing. It is depressing. I really wish that, that they'd been swept away. I'm going to be talking a bit about the U.S. election. That's a little bit depressing as well. But I'll uh, I'll actually read out some things that I've written. Now, um, Port Phillip Co-op has written, Here's a comment. Why don't your videos get any views? Are you filling in meta tags or not? If you don't fill them in, people won't see your videos. Well, obviously, I don't know why people aren't viewing my videos. Because no one tells me. And... Um, and they probably don't know. The, the reason they probably don't don't view my videos is because they don't see them. But um, are you filling in meta tags? No, I'm not. And this is why. Because YouTube itself says about tags. So this is, I'm reading directly from YouTube. Tags are descriptive keywords you can add to your videos to help viewers find your content. Your video's title, thumbnail, and description are more important pieces of metadata for your video's discovery. These main pieces of information help viewers to decide which videos to watch. Tags can be useful if the content of your video is commonly misspelled. Otherwise, tags play a minimal role in your video's discovery. Well, do I trust them or not? I don't, have, I don't see any reason not to. Um, you might have a different opinion. But um, I filled them out last year. That the way that videos are uploaded changed in uh, I think early November, maybe late December, uh, late November last year. Um, and um, and I didn't notice much change, except that once I worked out how the new system worked, it was much easier. In the old system, they actually did say that you should put tags in. Now they they've changed how they do things uh, Matt's, Matt's approach wrote I think those who are into traditionalism are less likely to have a YouTube account 
and less likely to use the service generally. I think people are likely to be older when they get into traditionalism and technology is used more by younger people, especially in terms of being active on it, like having a channel and subscribing, etc. I think your content is top notch. I wish there were more Australian channels like this. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure whether I would agree that traditionalism is something that older people get into. In the Melbourne traditionalists, most people are in their 20s and 30s. So, um, you know, and we only have, I'd say, about four, maybe five people. So that's about a quarter who are 50 or older. Now, my real question is not why people aren't watching the, the videos, because that's as in random people, because there could be a million reasons for that, good, bad, otherwise. My question was, why aren't subscribers watching? Why have I got 175 subscribers and I'm getting, you know, 10, 20, 30 views on a video? That's my question. Um, well, the US election. The US election has not turned out like anyone really thought um, the Democrats thought that they would run away with it they thought that they would get control of the presidency they would get control of the House of Representatives and they would get control of the Senate they already controlled the House of Representatives um, they actually lost seats in the House of Representatives they gained one seat in the Senate so they still don't control it and um the media is now saying that Joe Biden is president-elect of the United States. Well, I wrote an article um, on the 8th of November, so yesterday, and I'm going to read it out. Normally I'd uh, wait, get it to wait its turn, but by the time it comes around in 2022, uh, it might be out of date. Don't despair. I've just seen that the news services have announced Joe Biden as president-elect of the United States. Many of you will be feeling down and as if we have no future. But to that, I say, don't despair. First, the election is not over. As many of us have thought, this will all end up in the courts. So the pronouncements are only the score as of this minute. I would be quite surprised if those numbers don't change. There's no guarantee that President Trump will win. It is, however, hopeful. I don't want to count any chickens before they hatch, but I would also be quite surprised if no voter fraud was found. There is a reason jokes about dead people voting exist, because this is not the first time that the Democrats have done this. They also have a habit of getting their votes in last so that they can cook up the required number to win. It's a very old trick, and I wouldn't be surprised if we found out that the popular vote that they crow about winning so much isn't quite as honest as they pretend it is. In the past, Republicans have been too kind, too gentle, to be unkind cucks, to fight and to hold the Democrats to the fire. President Trump is neither gentle or a cuck. He likes to fight. It brings out his best qualities. So I think this will run for as long as it needs to run. Even if he loses and President Biden becomes a reality, it will still run. Then we have the Supreme Court of the United States. When President Trump came to office, it was leaning left, as it has for longer than most of us have been alive. Today, it's a bit of an unknown quantity. In theory, it leans to the right. The question is... By how much? The real question is, will it make this mess clearer or will it cuck? I don't think I'm the only one who will be watching on with intense interest. But what happens if President Biden becomes a reality? Will we all be heading to the gulags? No. Biden is 79, not 29. His wokeness is of the cynical politician variety. So yes, he will say and do woke things, but he will seriously disappoint his woke supporters, just as Trump disappointed his supporters. Candidate Biden has said that he supports 
and opposes nearly everything. He has tried to be all things to all people. What does he really believe? One thing I do find interesting is that in the past, both Biden and Harris have been quite tough on crime. They have not hesitated to lock up blacks. Sadly, America doesn't so much have a crime problem as a black crime problem. Would they do as they have done in the past? Or will they do as their supporters want? And in fact, President Trump has done and released criminals from jail. I don't know the answer to that one. Trump went into the 2016 election talking tough. Unfortunately, he walked back on a lot of that. Not all. He was true to his word when it came to free trade. But he is seriously disappointed when it came to immigration. White men voted for him because they wanted their country back. Instead, he went civic nationalist on them. Civic nationalism is neither civic or nationalist, so it always disappoints. He, like so many, is still blinded by the rhetoric of a colorblind society and the idea of America as a melting pot. That is not why he was elected. That is not why he won in 2016. That is not to say President Trump has achieved nothing. He has. But when you talk things up, they had better go up. When he said, let's make America great again, people understood that America was great when it was overwhelmingly white. Did he understand that? To finish off, I want to point out something that we on the dissident right should understand, but often don't. Trump is not on our team. He is simply better for our team than Biden is. Remember, if we vote left, then things speed up. If we vote right, things slow down. But we are always heading in the same direction, the wrong direction. Our job is to organize, fundraise, to do what it takes to get us all back on the right path instead of continuing on this liberal one. In Australia, we have a the Australian Electoral Commission. And the Australian Electoral Commission runs the Australian federal elections and they run many other elections, uh, including for things like charities and, uh, and boards and companies and things like this. And um, it has a very high reputation. And elections are all done by this one body. And the states have theirs for their own, uh, for the state elections and so forth. But in the United States, there is no equivalent of the Australian Electoral Commission. Every state, in fact, has its own individual laws about how the voting takes place. And before this year, I don't think any state had um, mass ballots. You know, you had to uh, basically apply to mail in your ballot if uh, if there was and you had to have a good reason for it. But this year they said, oh, because of COVID-19, everyone can do that in many states. And that, of course, has brought in a new level of complexity that wouldn't normally be there. But as I also mentioned, in the big cities, which are always democratically controlled, they like to hold back some precincts and wait and see how the vote goes, and then find some miraculous votes. And in the past, the Republicans have been, well, they've been cucks. They've basically said, oh, what can you do? Oh, it's more important to to look after the process than than to uh, challenge, you know, every little irregularity. And, of course, what that's done is it's meant that we have moved further and further left all the time. There's no stop. And that encourages them as well. Because let's face it, what you put up, what you tolerate, you get more of. And so putting up with corruption has meant that there would be more corruption. And that's just the logical extension. So we have these uh, these cities that overwhelmingly vote Democrat. And when they need to, they they find the votes. They write them themselves. Um, and as we're seeing, 
it, it's very blatant and has been in the past as well. Now, one of the most infamous of uh, election frauds was the 1960 US presidential election. It all came down to Illinois. It all came down to Chicago. It all came down to Cook County. And uh, basically, they needed 100,000 votes, and they found them. And they swung the state, and President Kennedy became president. Well, practically everyone agrees now that it was achieved through fraud, that they did what they've done this election, which is wait until the votes are counted, then go, oh, we need X amount of votes, and then they went away and they got them, right? which normally means some people sitting in a room and just filling out lots and lots and lots of ballot papers and then saying, oh, yeah, we found them, and then turning the election. I read a book on um, President Kennedy, and uh, it was interesting because the the guy who wrote it, he um, he w- had originally been a fan of Kennedy. He'd um, he'd actually helped campaign for him in 1960. I mean, nothing high level, you know, just just local stuff. But he'd campaigned for him and um, and supported him and and you know over the years there were all these stories about hey maybe he. President Kennedy wasn't quite the man that was presented to us. And so he decided to write a book on it. And he said, well, yeah, that's true. He wasn't. One of the stories he tells is not actually about um, President Kennedy, but about his father. And his father was uh, is widely regarded as a very crooked man. And um, one of the, the things that he would do, I'm sure that he's not the only person to have done this, but this is where I heard it from is, uh, you know, someone would run for an election and they didn't control him. So they obviously didn't want him to win. So, you know, we'll call him John Smith. So John Smith is running for the election. So they go out and they find someone else who's also named John Smith and they nominate them. Now, this person's not going to win, but, you know, you turn up at the ballot box and you say, hey, you know, I'm really enthusiastic for John Smith and there's two John Smiths on the ballot paper, what do you do? Well, that's what they're counting on, isn't it? So there's all these little tricks of the trade in uh, in defrauding votes that go back a long, long way. I'm also a regular reader of VDARE. And um, Peter Brimelow, who runs VDARE, He's written a number of articles saying President Trump has really, really messed up. You know, he should be masses in front with the white vote, particularly with white men. You know, that's his core constituent. And he asked, why, why isn't he? And he isn't because he, as I alluded to before, he hasn't looked after white men. He hasn't given them what they actually voted for. You know, what they want is they want a way out of the civil war that the entire Western world is heading towards. And um, that means that immigration has to be stopped and, even better, reversed. But instead, he's sort of, he's been playing games. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying he hasn't done anything. He has done things, you know, like the wall. He's built 20% of the wall, or 18%, I think it is, actually. But, um, you know, he, he was like, you know, that, that the whole thing will be built, the whole thing, and I'll make Mexico pay. Well, he could have done that. He could have done that. He could have made Mexico pay because there's all these Mexicans in the United States, and he simply could have passed the law that um, remittances of money that go back to Mexico and to lots of other countries um, have to pay a fee. And then that fee could have funded the wall. You know, he could have actually made Mexico pay for it, but that didn't happen. Um, the Dreamers, you know, he was, uh, he said, you know, my first day in office, I'll, uh, I'll get rid of this problem. And the problem's still there. You know, the problem's, it's quiet now. It's not as loud as it was four years ago. But um, if the Democrats get in, well, I, I think it probably will get as loud as it used to be. So a lot of these problems have been caused by by President Trump. 
because he's talked a, a big, big talk, but he hasn't walked the walk. And, uh, you know, I guess, and that, well, that is a big problem. But as others have pointed out, Trump has now made these issues mainstream. Is it possible for them to make them disappear? Maybe. But the thing is that they're, the left's intention is to double down. That's their natural instinct. And now that they think that they're so close to achieving their goal, well, I don't see any restraint on their part. You know, that used to be one of their great strengths that they were so restrained that they that they had patience and then they're running out of that. And we can see that. I also wonder what's going to happen to Antifa and Black Lives Matter when if Biden be, does become president, because um, are they still going to be protesting on the streets? Are they going to be demanding that he actually, uh, you know, become more radical? Or are those who are funding it all, because all of this needs funding, a lot of funding, are they going to say, hey, we're, we're back in the White House, that, that's enough, everyone go home. But of course, uh, Black Lives Matter started during President Obama's administration. So it's obvious that they are capable of, of doing this to a democratic president. So that'll be very interesting to see how that uh, how that pans out and what Antifa and um, and Black Lives Matters do. You know, we also have the the tech giants, and um, you know that might actually affect us. You know, maybe this channel will be gone. You know, I, I wrote a um, a post on Blogger. Four years ago, five or yeah, four years ago, saying we are the Jews now. And very recently, I I uh, recorded that and put it onto the YouTube channel. And someone sent me a message saying, "Hey, dude, don't don't use that language." And I'm like, "Well, any time they want to get rid of me, they can. It's their platform. It's not mine. I don't own it. Um, and yeah, they can get rid of me at any time." Um. And that's the same for Blogger. Although, surprisingly, I've never had any problems on Blogger at all in seven years. Never once. So um, I've had minor problems on YouTube. Um, I found out that one of my um, videos, a very early one, um, has a copyright thing on it. Not an infringement. Um it's still available. You can still look at it and, and so forth. But um, but they're, it's basically saying, you know, oh, you know, you shouldn't do this. Um, but I only noticed that very recently, and it's been up for more than a year, I, th I think close to 18 months. So, um, yeah, what does that mean? I don't know. But, you know, in the future... <clears throat> They can, they can take us off any time they feel like it. And they can certainly delete this channel at any time. Um, and there's nothing I can do about it. Now, um, I have been thinking about putting stuff up on BitChute, but, uh, but I haven't done that. But it does remind me that we do have this channel up and we have it on Podbean. So if you want to check it out uh, on Podbean instead of on YouTube, you can. And of course, if this channel does go silent for whatever reason, then go to Upon Hope, my blog, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to find out what's going on there. Now, um, I'm nearly uh, 25 minutes in. I'm going to end it there. Um I'd like to thank my my subscribers, those who have uh, have stuck with me. And um, if you would like to be one of those people, you can go to Subscribestar and help me out. It's very much appreciated. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.